All right, Chief, obviously uh, a violent weekend that's been documented. A lot of people are looking at you to make changes or do something different. Just your thoughts on you know, moving ahead now after this weekend? Let me just start by saying this. We are fighting against our progress. Uh, we have short memories, and, and again, you know, my heart goes out to all the victims. And you know, one homicide is one too many. Uh, certainly, we had seven this weekend. Second um, most violent weekend since the beginning of the year. Uh, but let me talk statistics for a minute. First, we're one of the few larger cities in America right now that's seeing a decline in not only overall crime but violent crime. Mm -hmm. As of today, we're sitting even with homicides compared to last year. Uh, I don't say that in saying we're successful. Mm -hmm. We are making progress. Uh, Los Angeles did not turn overnight. New York did not turn. We have forgotten that it was a time where places like LA were 2,000 murders a year. New York, 4,000 murders. But yet, we look at Detroit, and we're sitting uh, last year with the lowest number in 47 years. The year before that, 46 years or what? Right, right. So my making point progress. is, we're making progress, but what takes us back and kind of derails us is when we have, since Easter, three incidents involving children. It's tragic when children become victims. And so we, it, it just takes the statistics, it takes the progress and throws it out the window. What do you say to folks? You told me before that you can't have police officers on every street corner, it's just not realistic. But there's still folks out there who say, we need more police officers, we need more funding, all that stuff. Is Chief Craig fighting for that? What's your thoughts on, on those Absolutely, Chief reports? Craig is fighting for that. Uh, People should remember, I was here when the city was 1.6 million. Mm -hmm. uh, I was hired at a time when we had 5,500 police officers. Very different time. Mm -hmm. And so here we are doing more with less. We're fighting crime smarter. But what I'm saying is there is no major city in America that has cops on every corner, every block, every doorstep. That's not realistic. Even in the great city of New York, that has 38,000 police officers. Manhattan being the exception, that they have a, a, a police officer almost right, every other right. block. But my point is this, police and community must be engaged. The responsibility of crime prevention really lays with the community. So this is about empowerment. This is about empowering the community to say, look, we're in this fight with the police, we're in together. I know you name a neighborhood in this city or any city across this country, that the vibrant neighborhoods, those that are most safe are the ones where the people have said, we're not gonna take this. It's more of us, it is more of us than the very few that commit violent acts. On top of that, do you, do you, after what happened this past weekend, do you keep doing what you're doing or do, or do you change your goal or change your tactics short term to, to stop what just happened last weekend? Not necessarily. Uh, in fact, you know, we rolled out two weeks ago, take back, your neighborhood, mm -hmm. yep. one neighborhood at we a time. Yeah. You were there. We took two scout cars where we were seeing an uptick in activity, violent activity. One of the scout car areas, a child was murdered. And so what happened? We go in on that Monday, two Mondays ago, not one incident. No violent crime, no street robberies. The only activity that we saw, there were three Craigslist robberies. Right. But I'm talking about the robberies, street robberies. Didn't happen. We had one shooting at the beginning of the initiative, a non-fatal shooting incident. That's before they knew we were coming. My point is, did it work? Was it successful? I think so. Uh, is it sustainable? Well, as I talked about taking back the neighborhood, part of the take back is the handoff. And the handoff is, we're gonna support the community, we're gonna empower the community, and then we're gonna step back and continue to support. That's how it works. It's kind of controversial, but our neighborhood's doing enough, our community's doing enough. Do it just depends. Doing enough? Uh, I think there are a lot of well-meaning people. I think there are a lot of people that want what everyone wants, they want a safe city. Uh, I said the con made a comment, and it certainly wasn't meant to offend anyone. Mm -hmm. But the city has become somewhat desensitized. You know, I talked about when I first uh, returned home after being gone 34 years. You know, I looked at the crime of carjacking and I thought, this is different. 
you know, middle of the day, someone in a car stopped at a, a traffic light and they're pulled out of their car. That doesn't happen everywhere. I in was fact, just it's an anomaly. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. an anomaly. But when I say Detroit then has become desensitized because no alarms went off. Now, let's fast track to present times. One, people are aware. I, I talk about it constantly. This is not the way life should be. Mm -hmm. Fact of the matter is we've reduced carjackings, double digits. Robberies are down in the double digits. So we are turning the corner. Have we got there yet? No, we haven't. So as we continue to move forward, it is absolutely a necessity for people to say, I'm in this fight and I'm not gonna let the few ruin my quality of life. This is my neighborhood. You, after the violent weekend, made a point to show your face, come out, be seen, be heard. Why was that important for you as the leader to come out and say, I'm here and I wanna speak and you're gonna listen to me now? Well, it was important because I wanted to know the good people that are out fighting the fight, the stakeholders, uh, the groups that are out, like the Malik Shabazz, uh, Pastor Mo, uh, other community leaders, Nation of Islam. I wanted to know that I support what they're doing, but we need to do more. I was critical and certainly um, some of the uh, local clergy leaders were hurt because I said, I don't believe marches work. I support the marches and I think overlaying the marches in an area that we're doing enforcement work sends a much larger message. But anytime we're out marching and there's a shooting two blocks away while we're marching, who are we sending a message to? It looks good, we're on television, stop the violence, hands up, don't shoot. But the people that need to hear that are not listening. That's the problem. Not only are they not listening, but I don't wanna just come in and say, well, we, we've had this situation, we're making the community aware, I wanna sustain it. Mm -hmm. So when I look at three years now, the fact that we're still driving crime down, sustainability is the key. Los Angeles did it. Now, while Los Angeles year to date is seeing a, an increase in crime, Chicago is seeing an increase Look, the fact is, Detroit's no different than any other major city. No different. Last question. Crime's everywhere. Last question. Summer is coming. We know it seems to spike in the summer. People get a little bit more. Not ner necessarily. Okay. So you correct Last me. summer. So. Last summer, we had some of the lowest rates of violent crime. Also, last summer, we hired over 5,000 youth. You see that continuing the this summer? Absolutely, the mayor's rolled out an initiative, a big initiative. Mm -hmm. We're talking about 8,500 young people hired here in the city of Detroit. And that will impact the I, people I believe that. The streets, I believe right? it. Yeah. Um, so that's one issue. So when we look at last year, 2015, once again, end of the year, in a decline, the one month that we had the most homicides was the month of December. Not the month of August, not in July, the month of December. So I don't really get wrapped up into summer. I think, you know, certainly working with young people, giving them opportunities can have an impact. Uh, look, the other part of this, we can't arrest a way out of this problem. Right. We gotta make opportunities. I don't care what city, you just can't do it. Chief, I thank you for your time. All right, thank you. It.